Are you looking for a nice multi-day pack and wanting to transition more into the ultralight category? If so, the Osprey Exos 58 might fit the bill. That's next. Welcome to Backcountry Renegade, I'm Jeff. Today we are looking at one of my favorite packs, the Osprey Exos 58. This is a great pack for anyone who wants to do multi-day backpacking, also for a through hike. The nice thing about it is there's plenty of room in here for even if you need to fit a bear canister and carry some winter clothes, this is an option for that. Plus, it's more leaning towards the ultralight category. So if you're transitioning from traditional backpacking, wanting to move more ultralight, this is a great pack. Let's check it out. The Osprey Exos comes in a 38 liter, 48 liter, and a 58 liter pack size. This one here is the 58 liter pack size. It also comes in either a small, medium, or large, depending on your torso size. And the one here is the small version. It weighs about 2.63 pounds, or that's about 42 ounces. The small version is also more like 56 liters than the 58 listed capacity. The dimensions are 29.53 inches in height, 16.14 inches in width, and 14.57 inches in diameter. It is very comfortable in any of the weight ranges varying from 15 to 30 pounds. Osprey seeks really to save weight by the thinner fabrics as we will see in more detail. Now the fabrics here, uh, the main compartment is 100 denier nylon. It also has some accents as well, and the accents are also 100 denier nylon as well. But the bottom is a 210 denier high tensity nylon. Compared to some of their other packs, this is a lot lighter and thinner fabrics that are used in an effort to get more into the ultralight category. Starting in the back, we can see where this Osprey really starts to shine, and it's in the Exoform harness with the air speed suspension system. This is a 3D tension mesh back panel that functions kind of like a trampoline effect that really helps separate the pack from your back. That way you can load your pack and don't have to worry about any unnecessary pressure points. What this does is it creates a gap from your back to the pack and provides some space for great ventilation. Uh, this trampoline airspeed mesh back panel is very comfortable. This is actually my favorite suspension system when it comes to the Osprey suspensions. Uh, like I said, it allows for excellent ventilation and airflow to keep you nice and cool when you're working hard to hike. It does a great job of also spreading the weight. Now, if you notice, the ventilation continues all the way down into the hip belt area. Now, the hip belt is a very thin material, and this is an effort, again, to save weight. So you do have some mesh here some, uh, with some ventilation in it that is, functions real well. You'll also notice that there's little holes here, and that's because on the previous version, there would be a lot of rubbing. So instead, they did put some holes here, which does fix that problem, but also you are losing your hip belt pocket pockets, so something to consider as well. You do have a pliable light wire frame that goes continually down the side of the frame pack all the way down into the hips. Now it spreads apart to go really nice around and hug your hips very nicely to produce very excellent comfortability but also great weight distribution down to your hips. The shoulder straps are also another thing where we see them in an effort to save weight. You can see up at the top where the pack is really sitting the majority on your back, on your shoulders, it's nice and padded. And then when it goes down to your chest area, you can see how much thinner it got. And that's as an effort to save weight. Now, the mesh at the top is very cushiony and ventilated as well. And as we saw, it does get thinner as well. Now, the shoulder straps are also sewn into the pack. And so you cannot uh, really adjust it like you can other packs where you can go up or down depending on your torso size. So they are sewn in, so make sure you are able to find an exact fit for you, whether it's small, medium, or large, uh, because you will not have much uh, versatility as far as uh, movement for that to get perfect adjustments. So if it doesn't fit, it's not gonna work. So something I recommend highly to go and test it out in the store beforehand before you commit to buying. You also have these load lifter adjuster straps here to where you can adjust the load, getting closer or further away 
from your back depending on the comfort level for you. Another thing we do see in the shoulder straps is on the buckle you do have your chest strap buckle and it does have an integrated whistle built in for emergencies. You can also see on the left shoulder strap you do have the stow on the go trekking pole holder and on the front side you do have the area where the trekking pole will go in. Once you have them in just cinch it down and it'll be able to hold your trekking poles to free up your hands when you're doing more uh, technical climbing. Looking at the top, we can see that we do have a top loader. Now first what we have is a brain. The brain is very nice because you can store some extra things in there. You do have these little clips here, these little tabs. You can have extra carabiners or attach any other kind of gear there. Flipping up the brain area, you can see the, front, the bottom does have this mesh see-through pocket. And inside that mesh pocket, you do have a nice little key holder here to store anything that you would like to get quick access to as well. On the back of the brain top lid, you do have another bigger pocket here where you can store a lot more things as well. Now, the top lid is detachable real easily by just taking off these clips. And in so doing, you do have a flap jacket cover that is inside here. So you can see if you do want to go without the top lid, you can reduce the size of your pack and go with the top jacket cover here, which is nice to help keep uh, rain and elements outside from the inside of your pack. Now, if you do decide to go with this top lid, the one downside about this is you cannot remove this flap jacket cover. So something to consider, you do have to bear that weight uh, with that flap jacket cover there if you do decide to keep the top lid. It's not one or the other, you have to have both. Now looking at the inside, you can see you do have this drawstring to close it and open it. And inside you can see how much space you really do have inside this 58 liter pack. This really provides a lot of plenty room for most of your things if you're doing multi-day packs out in the backcountry. So very spacious as well for that. Inside the pack you do have your water bladder pocket here where you can go ahead and put in your water bladder and then you do have this little lock cord where you can tie it down so it doesn't fall through into that pocket. You also have, once you have your load uh, all in here, you do have this little cinch cord where you can go ahead and compress your load down so it's not all uh, rattling around as you're walking. And again, you do have this little compression strap cord that you can go ahead and close your pack once it's all said and done. And I like to just stuff this drawstring right on in there after I'm done, followed by the flap jacket cover. Looking a little bit more at the front, you can see you do have this nice large front mesh pocket. Now in previous versions, this was all just stretch mesh. Now you can see this main sides are stretch mesh and they reinforced it with some nylon here. And this is really good because if you decide to put any sharp things like crampons in here, it's not gonna punch a hole into the stretch mesh so easily like it did the previous year's version. You can store plenty of things inside this front pocket, so very, handy to go with that. Another thing you do have in the front of this pack is your ice axe loop holder and your bungee tie off. So that's a nice thing if you want to have your ice axe in the back. You only have one here on the Exos 58. Looking down here you also have this really small cord here and it's super thin in an effort to save weight and what this functions as is it's actually a sleeping pad holder. So if you have your sleeping pad you can hold these down uh, on there. And you can notice as an effort to save weight, Osprey really thinned out their cords and straps and everything. Now, my first thought upon seeing this is there's nowhere uh, gonna be durable enough for me, but upon testing, it was plenty durable. Now, once you do put a sleeping pad in there or a sit pad, just make sure it's cinched down nice and tight and it won't fall out too easily. These straps are removable, so if you decide not to go with them, you can take them all off and save some more weight. Looking at the sides, you do have more of these compression straps here, and again, you can notice how thin they really are. So some of them can go over the side mesh pockets or you can go inside them depending on your wants. Now, the stretch mesh pockets are really nice and really deep, you can see, to store these 
really long water bottles or tent poles. Now the nice thing is they are reinforced by some nylon in here. So if you do put tent poles or something like that, it's not gonna punch through this mesh. So very nice. Now the nice thing about this too is if you do have water bottles, you can access it from the top here but also this side part here. Now, unlike the 38, the 38 does not allow you to access it from the side, only from the top. So once you get into the 48 and the 58 model of the Exos, you do have this extra feature here where you can access your water bottle from the side and the top. So pretty cool feature with that. Another thing you notice is looking at the front, you do not have on the Exos 58 a sleeping bag compartment holder. So there's no separate pocket. Now, because the Exos 58 does kind of bow out, one of the things that I like to do is just stuff my sleeping bag in there and I allow, allow it to fill up all these weird gaps and everything on the side so you don't have any space there. So that's a fine thing, just stuff your sleeping bag without a stuff sack down in here and let it fill up all the spaces and then put your load and everything that you're carrying inside your pack on top of that. Again, looking at these compression straps uh, on the clips as well as you compress your load down and, and tie down your top lid. Also notice the clips are a lot thinner and smaller than the typical uh, backpacks that Osprey makes. And again, this is an effort to save weight. I think the Exos 58 is one of the most perfect combinations of lightweight material, but also durable. So I've tested this out. This has been my go-to pack for a while and I really like it. I really like the airspeed suspension system um, in a lightweight. The Osprey Exos 58 sells for $220 on osprey.com and every once in a while you can find it on sale if you are lucky. So let's talk about the pros. Overall, this is a great pack that I like. Uh, coming from the Osprey Atmos 65, this was a nice relief as far as how much weight you are saving. So a lot lighter than that. You still have the nice back panel that is nice uh, cushion and mesh. Uh, you have plenty of cushion in the shoulder straps where it's needed. And uh, you also have the nice alloy frame that continues throughout. So it keeps the, the structure of the frame being able to maintain the uh, weight distribution all the way down to the hips. So a great option for that. You still have your stretch mesh. You still have your deep pockets. And a lot of the cords and straps that I thought would be an issue as far as durability wise, which are thinner, are proving to be uh, able to withstand whatever I throw at it. So I've been pretty happy with it so far. Uh, pretty cool thing. And you're able to fit a bear canister inside of it. So pretty neat. Now, some of the cons. First, there's only one ice axe loop holder. So if you have an ice axe and you wanna maybe take two, uh, this is probably not a pack for that. Also, I wasn't a huge fan of the sleeping pad holder. I really would have liked to have some clips there, being able to clip it out, clip it in for nice, easy access. Also, as far as the hip belts, I would have loved to see some hip belt pockets. So one thing to consider, is if you do go this route, maybe look at getting a fanny pack or something like that. But that is something I was a, a little bummed about, but it's not a deal breaker for me. Overall, it's durable, it's lightweight, and it gets the job done. So what did you think of the Osprey Exos 58? Is this a pack you would choose for your adventures? If not, what would you choose in its place? Leave me a comment in the comment section. If you like what you saw, make sure to give me a thumbs up. Also subscribe for more content like this. And as always, thanks for watching.